On today's episode of Watch Jericho, I got the hottest motorcycle of 2022. And it's not even a motorcycle. What is going on guys? I am Watch Jergo and today we are back in a familiar place, the garage at home. And we are back here with my new 2022 Honda Navi. And it's not even new. I'm the second owner. Now, just a quick update. Obviously, we're back here in the home garage and I'm feeling way better today, which is awesome. Uh, my voice is starting to come back. My legs work again and we're just trying to get through the shoulder here. But other than that, it's a pretty good day. So we're going to jump right back in and talk about my new Honda Navi that I'm very excited about. And I just bought it and I don't think I get to keep it, which is the worst part of the whole video. So this is the 2022 Honda Navi. This is the red one. There's a couple different colors you can get and obviously the uh, plastic just changes colors. It's all basically just big pieces of plastic that are bolted onto this bike because the bike in itself is very simple. You've seen the teardowns. Really the only thing you need is, is this section right here because it's actually a scooter with a CVT and not a traditional motorcycle. The CVT is very nice. It makes this thing super accessible to beginners and it's also very cheap because it forgoes a lot of the current motorcycle trends and Honda just gives you a very, very simple scooter that's uh, the size of a motorcycle and can get a lot done at an awesome price point. Now I said this is the hottest bike of 2022 and it is because you can't buy them. First of all, if you go to your local dealership, you'll be lucky if they have one on the showroom floor and if they do have one on the showroom floor, they're not gonna wanna sell it to you without you paying some insane markup. These things are going for double. I hate to say it, dealers are out there asking double MSRP. I know that my friend that I bought this from paid 2,600 for it just a few weeks ago, and that's a pretty typical uh, MSRP plus taxes plus dealer fee. That's not crazy. But there are dealerships out there, you're gonna leave paying $5,000 for the pleasure of riding a Navi which is insane. They're asking straight up double MSRP and then taxes and dealer fee. So it's hard to find them right now. Everybody wants them. It's gonna be really good. I'm sure it's really reliable. Typical Honda engine, 109 CC, like what can go wrong with it? And all of those things add up to a package that dealers know they can way overcharge you for. So just don't pay their markups, I'm begging you. I'm begging you guys not to help those dealerships out. They don't need it and try to buy a Navi somewhere else if you can find a dealer that will sell an MSRP. I get that it's cheap top to bottom. It's not gonna hurt you to pay a little over on a bike like this, but let's not support these dealers that are out here just robbing people blind. You can probably find one for MSRP eventually, and when it's time to sell it, you won't take a bath with uh, all that extra markup you paid. The engine right here is a 109cc single cylinder engine, and it's carbureted, it is not fuel injected, it does have electric start, but even though it has electric start, it also has kick start. So if your battery ever dies, you can still kick it through. I doubt anyone will ever use that, but hey, uh, there's nothing like getting stuck out in the middle of nowhere and the battery being dead and being able to kick start your bike. Something that we can't do on any of the other modern bikes, say like a 2020 Grom. Unlike the Grom, which makes a reasonable amount of horsepower for the size that it is, the Navi makes seven horsepower which can propel it to a 55 mile an hour downhill. I've had pretty good luck on a downhill with me full tuck. I mean, my chin almost touching this crossbar here. I can get it to about 55. And in uh, you know typical scenarios, you can keep it about 51, 52, and uh, I'd say 50 under any hill climbing, normal conditions like that. This CVT means it's super easy to ride. You don't have to shift or anything like that. Where the clutch lever would be, you have another rear brake and also a little uh, flip down latch, just like a four wheeler. So you pull this in and then hit that and you're in the parking brake. And uh, that keeps it from rolling back on hills because it doesn't have a traditional transmission. You can't just leave it in gear. From what I can tell, even when you're holding the thing wide open throttle, the entire time you're riding it, I have ridden this thing on a highway, a three lane highway. I was in the far right lane, just holding it pinned all the way home when I brought it here. I think it will still do well over 100 miles a gallon. I think they say 110 is what it's rated at. So you can absolutely beat on this thing and still, uh, pretty much ride it for free. I mean, what's one gallon every 110 miles? That's all over the city. I filled it up the day I bought it 
and it is still full. I cannot tell you how many times I've written it and it has not come off the full mark, which is just absolutely impressive to me. So the Navi sits on some very cute 12 inch tires on a stamped steel wheel. Uh, all of this adds up to a really light package. The entire bike only weighs 236 pounds. So if you drop it or if a beginner drops it, which is really what this bike's targeted to, it's no big deal for them to pick it up. I mean, you could probably pick it back up with just one hand. It's awesome compared to some of the thousand pound bikes that we have today. Um, it has drum brakes all the way around, which I don't love. I wish they were disc brakes, but I get it for the price point. And even the speedometer is cable drive on this thing. Now you've got a horn right there, your fuel selector right there, which has uh, you know on, off, and reserve. And I think, let's see, it must have been set to reserve the entire time, which is definitely the wrong choice there. It comes with two keys. It does not come with the cool flip key like the new Groms do. But uh, if you look at the price tag right there, you can see the original price tag, $1,807. These things are so unbelievably cheap. It honestly hardly makes sense that it's a street legal bike. Um, storage right here, flip that. You can see that I've been taking this thing to eat every day. My receipts are in there. There's some change in there. The storage compartment is kind of huge. That's a half my arm. And it won't hold a helmet, but they say it'll hold a jacket. Obviously, it'll hold a water bottle. It holds your uh, food every day if you want a pretty normal amount of food in a bag. You can shove it all in there. Um, the storage compartment works great. You can reach down, open it in a drive through throw your food in, and take off. No problem. While I've got the keys in my hand, I'll show you the one other place you'll need it. It's to open the gas door right there. There's the gas cap, a very old school Honda cap like it's from the 80s, which is cool. It has little arrows to tell you when it's lined up. So that's that, and we put the keys back in the ignition. This thing is designed for two passengers. You can see it's got quite a long seat, and it has some stamped pegs back here for your passenger. Uh, you can ride it two up, I have done it, and it's very, very slow. I mean, you could basically cut everything in half if you put two people on this, but it's still fun to get around on. It's kind of like riding around on an old Vespa, and it works just fine for what it is. Just don't try to go out on a highway with two people. It's not gonna work out for you, I can tell you that. Back here by the foot pegs, a couple other cool things. We've got the air filter housing. Uh, that feeds the carburetor right through there. The rear is a mono shock that's off to one side here, and uh, it does have a gas shock inside the spring and uh, there's the Kickstarter again. And it has a center stand, which is kind of interesting. If you need to save space in your garage, that center stand is definitely there to hook you up. It's a little bit more upright. You can see the difference between the kickstand and the center stand right there. So this will save you a couple of inches in your garage if you're worried about space like that, or uh, you know, if you don't want it to roll back, you can always toss it on the center stand. That's really not something you see much anymore. I'd say center stands are pretty rare these days. The Navi also has a giant canister muffler that keeps it very quiet. Uh, you can pretty much ride it wide open throttle and no one gets mad at you because it's just humming down the road. Now the only weird thing about the Navi that I don't exactly love, even though uh, it's kind of right in the middle, you can't love it, you can't hate it. Uh, if the ignition's on, the headlight does not turn on. So, you know, if you need light at night, you can't just flip the key on and have it. The engine must be running. And when the engine is not above idle, the light flickers as you'd kind of expect. Obviously it has a 12 volt battery because it has electric start but that battery doesn't run the lights from what I can tell, or a relay has to be pulled in before the lights turn on. That's about the only quirk with the Navi. Everything else is exactly what you would expect. It does what you expect. You hit the start button, you go ride it, and it just works. I will say I haven't even needed the choke to start the thing, which is cool, even cold starts. Just uh, hit the starter, give the throttle a little flick, and it comes to life every single time for me, which I love. And yes, people are already making fender eliminators to get rid of this insane tag bracket and go to really small LED turn signals, and I'm pretty sure there should be some tail light replacements out soon with integrated turn signals as well. A nice little LED tail light with the 50-50 turn signals would be much nicer. Uh, wow, there are no LEDs on this bike. These are all incandescent lights. Uh, the turn signals are traditional old, like 1157s. I just noticed every single thing on this is a traditional bulb, and if they had LEDs, I think you could run them all on the battery and it would never die. Uh, kind of strange when the Grom is full LED. I know they were trying to save money on this thing, and I know they hit the price point that everybody wanted, but, it's crazy that everything else they make is 100% LED and the Navi got zero LEDs. So that is our overview of the 2022 Navi. Let's go ride this thing. Now it has 
86 miles on it. It's crazy that I'm the second owner at 86 miles. Let's go get this thing over 100 miles. There is a kickstand safety switch. There is not a center stand safety switch, obviously. So if it's on the kickstand, flip that guy up. And to start it, on, brake, and... That's a cold start, hasn't been started in days. You can see the headlight flashing there and off idle. To be clear, this is not the scooter that I wrecked the other day. If you guys, you know, all the road rash and my arm being torn up, that was my electric scooter and it was wide open throttle. I hit a bump, speed wobbled and went down. Um, this, I'm not worried about just rocking safety glasses because I'm just going around the neighborhood real quick. So that's the Honda Navi. I literally rolled it out of the garage and just turned the throttle a little bit and we're good to go. You can barely hear the engine over the wind noise. It's super quiet. It does exactly what you want. I mean, I love this bike. So now I'm headed to grab some breakfast with the Navi real quick. Uh, I'll use the compartment down here to move my food around. It works great for that. And then we'll throw on some gear and go make a full pull with this thing so you can see just how fast it is to uh, its top speed. Maybe we can do 55, maybe we can do 50. I'm not making any promises. Okay, we're all geared up now. We're gonna take the Navi back out and make what I would call a typical run on a bike like this. So I'm out of Monster here at the house. I need to go get a refill, which means uh, we're gonna go buy all the Monster I can fit inside the storage cubby. And that'll give you a good idea of what the capacity is as well. So let's fire this thing up and we're gonna go make a top speed run. It's pretty easy to make a top speed run when you're barely exceeding the speed limit anywhere. And grab some monster. Let's do it. All right, we've got nine monsters to start with. Let's stack this thing up and see what it'll hold. Well, not a lot when it starts uh, falling out on you, that's for sure. Apparently we have a lot of room in the back. Well, it will easily hold another three, four, five, maybe. So you can get a, you know, a solid 12 to 14 monsters in there without trying too hard. The question everybody will want to know, did the monsters make it home safe? It looks like they did. Invariably, people are going to ask about the handling and the brakes and uh, the safety features. As you can see, it's, it's a price point bike. The handling, it's very neutral, I would say. I love the way it rides because it just falls into the corners when you want. Um, it's got a perfect seat height for me. I'm super relaxed. You know, you can bend your knees a little bit on this thing. The only opinion that matters, of course, is the girlfriend's, and she is on her tiptoes. She's, you know, 
a little shorter than I am. I don't know how tall I am, like 5'10". I think I'm a pretty average height, but if you are shorter, there's lowering links. And if you are taller, you'll be bending your knees a lot and it'll be even more comfy. Uh, safety features, no ABS, obviously. Uh, if you grab a whole lot of front brake, it's happy to let the front tire slide and you probably drop the bike like that if you're not used to it. But none of these are drawbacks. These are things you expect with a scooter, nice neutral handling, brakes that work fine. They're not incredible. They're not disc brakes. They're not ABS. Like I said, like it stops the bike eventually. <laughs> At 500 pounds total, it's not that hard to stop. So the brakes work just like you would expect. And you know, the power delivers just like you would expect. You can ride it wide open throttle all the time and it's fun. And that's it. That is the 2022 Honda Navi, a hard bike to get, incredibly popular, and it's a lot of fun. If you're an experienced motorcyclist, it's a toy. As you've seen most of the reviews, people are just trying to make them faster, beating on them, treating them like toys. And also if you're an experienced motorcyclist, maybe you should just buy a Grom because that was kind of targeted towards motorcyclists that wanna have fun on a small bike. The Navi, if you're buying that, it has its use cases, but they're small, they're for maybe commuting to a close job, maybe moving some small amount of groceries around uh, and just having fun. Honda keeps knocking it out of the park with super fun little bikes. All the, like they keep making the 50, they've got the Metropolitan, the Monkey, the Super Cub, the Navi, the Grom, and they're just killing it with these affordable bikes. So shout out to Honda for keeping motorcycles fun. And I only paid $1,900 for this Navi. I barely even paid the taxes on it. So I'm super excited to have it, but the old owner wants it back. And I think I'm gonna have to sell it back to him for what I paid because his fiance wants to ride it. I told him just wait until the girlfriend's done riding it and I'll sell it back to you. That is it for today, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to head on over to shop watchjr.com for cool shirts, not like this. And please, a like, share, subscribe, do whatever you wanna do. And I will talk to you next time. The only opinion that matters, girls think it's cute. It really does look just like the old cub. It's got the cub styling with the big plastic fairing that kind of goes around everything. It's probably built cheaper than the cub, but hey, it sure does work and it sure is a brand new motorcycle for uh, less than the price of a TV basically.